an auto 2.5. I brought a 2.5 fro today. That joke made sense. You just ain't thinking about it. What's good, y'all? Your main man, Master Cell, leading the Master Nice of the round table of Company One. Subscribe to the spin move. And we're here with 2.5 Dimensional Seduction Halfway Point. Because in case you didn't know, 2.5 in this Dimensional Seduction is going to be two cores. Riding out during the fall season and pretty much to the end of the year, which just to those who are watching this or those who ain't watching this, it's a surprise to me as well. Despite the fact that I knew that since the beginning of this season. <laughs> now, I have done two videos on Dimensional Seduction already. The first one pretty much being about the backlash <laughs> of the first episode from manga fans because of the comparison to the manga and how the anime was very much toning down its fan service, despite being on High Dive. Not the High Dive have the most thirstiest show, but when you have shows like right now, <laughs> Plus Size Elf, and earlier this year, Gushed Over Magical Girls on it, to be fair, I can see why censoring the show is out of character. Let's not forget Shane Soldier. And my second video about it was pretty much I was benching this, sh benching this show for a reason not to get too much into, but I ended up enjoying and appreciating the show if nothing else is for its attention to detail when it comes to the cosplay community. It's one of those things where kind of like My Dress Up Darling where it does have its obvious problems that could easily turn off people from watching the show, but because of the subject of cosplaying itself, we don't get too many animes on that in general. So when you're a type of person like me who go out to these conventions, who have friend groups in IRL that's into cosplay, into these animes, this actually was not only a breath of fresh air, but it's just something that's cool to see. It's kind of like how I am with most music anime, just an anime that kind of get into music or get into the subject of music or into the industry of it. It's just a joy to see. Nice to see you care, if nothing else. But with that being said, the reason I'm making this video now is from at least episode 2 to 12, I haven't per se talked about the show itself. So take this as one of my seasonal end videos of a show that I have watched but haven't been covering, and here you go. Now one quick thing to say about this show so far, I have not touched the manga since that first chapter. Well, first two chapters. So episode 2 to 12, I can't make any comparisons to the manga, so if you're still that type of person who believes the manga is so much better than why you're even watching the anime, I got nothing for you. But because the start of this, this, this discussion of this show, and currently discussion of the show, is indeed fan service that actually don't get it twisted, fan service, this is a fan service show that is the forefront despite what I said about his cosplay. But there are moments that you can kind of pick out that's like obviously censored per se, as in we only kind of just hear what's happening in the background when it comes to characters describing themselves being undressed or complimenting people, girls, on their assets. You can obviously imagine that the manga has all that full display. Also uncensored, if you know what I mean. There was nipples in those first two chapters. There were no nipples here, though. Unless that Blu-ray, doubt it. But the thing is, at the same damn time, in most cases with fans from animes, it's kind of always like that. And the reason I say that, I had to reflect on things and think like, while there is your fan service juggernaut that, get, that jump over that huddle, one of the big shows that was doing it was High School DD, now you got other shows. Let's just say Shorty Tens was a hell of a time, but occasionally you do get uncensored anime, we it comes with like a Blu-ray, DVD, box set release. 20, 2015, Summer, uh, Summer You Simply Cannot Forget, with the likes of Prison School, Masa Masune, XOX. Hell, even going back to see uncensored version of Rare Wars, surprised me. What I'm getting at here is uh, kind of when it comes to these shows, when they air, they either are heavily censored, like Akiyashi Triangle, or when you have your fan service shows that does have extra fan service in the manga, like nipples and extra butt shots and stuff like that, that is kind of typical. Again, like I've been saying since January, the rules of fan service got flipped on its head this year with, with the winter season with Gushing Over Magic Girls, Shane Soldier, and Tales of Wedding Rings. However, and since and that, you guys kind of been spoiled, haven't you? I think it was taking nine months back before 2023. Y'all, we ain't get it like this. Uncensored Simicast anime? Don't be fooled. The most thirstiest and sexiest show, even with its implications behind it, on High Dive is Redo of Hitler. And that show was heavily censored upon Simicast. You had to wait a few days afterwards to catch the uncensored version of whoever was actually posting that illegally. So while upon the hype of everything and reading through everything, the backlash that the show got for the manga, it was kind of obvious, it was kind of obvious they was cutting some stuff out. But at the same time, at this point, 12 episodes later, the juvenile, it kind of makes you just unappreciate what's going on for real because this show was still plenty thirsty. Like even with the backlash continuing from episode one and two, the thirstiest episode that I've seen of this show per se, 
came immediately after episode three. In a sense, it's almost like as if when an anime tones down the blood and gore for a show that manga that's very violent, but they have to kind of tone it down a little bit just so it can air on TV. You guys are kind of like them fans. Where's the blood? Where's the nipples? Where's the show I love? Let me stop before I piss off the entire fan base. But with that being said, when it comes to that subject of fan service, there is a huge discussion going on, and the status quo of this in this discussion isn't even the important part. Because it's not IRL right now, it's simply a context in the show that's been brought up numerous, 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 damn near countless of times, probably about five. But it's the fact that our main character, our cosmic main character, really, sir, is not 18. Matter of fact, upon looking it up, she is 16. Because our male lead, Oku, Okumura, did I say his name wrong? Fuck. He himself is 17. With the, his childhood friend, Tashibana, you can imagine she's pretty much 17 as well. And I don't say this to say that these are the show, three characters that go through at least most of the fan service in this show. I say this because because of that age, they are blocked a numerous times in this show from things that they could be doing cosplay-wise. Because these t- characters are striving, well at least, well not Tashibana per se, she's kind of just playing around because she's in love with Okamura. But... Mimisa and Okamura is trying to be professionals in this game. And long story short, because they're not 18, they have they have to abide by certain rules. As in, one, they can't sell R-rated material. And there was a big incident in one of the, <laughs> in the first cosplay event that Mimisa went to as Liliel, and they, she had to get a whole group of people to help her out for her first cosplay gig, and she was very thankful to everybody, so she jumped up real quick to turn around, which realized underneath that skirt she was wearing cosplay panties but bright pink pink lace panties and she did so as her cosplay panties i have to keep saying cosplay panties because the subject of cosplay panties is very much a big thing in this show as well because her actual panties not cosplay panties is very embarrassed there's somehow some motherfucking way that some woman watching this you know damn well there's a chance there's such a thing as panties you mean to show off and panties you don't you think the fact that the thongs ain't tucked into them jeans is an accident but back to the discussion, when this moment happened with Rivisa, the whole room was like, wait, you're not 18. You can't do that. You can't flash your panties. Now, as a guy who's been reviewing t- fan service shows for a long time, I have existed in the gray area of all this and have leaned kind of back and forth on separate subjects. So in some cases, you can see it's considered hypocrisy. Hell, I did just say I reviewed Gus and Over Magic Girls, right? But uh, when it comes to a touch of realism in this show, from cosplaying and fan service type medium alike, the f- throwing in the fact that there is legal repercussions for you to be doing such things when you're not 18, I'm sure that kicked a lot of Eshi fans straight in the balls. Even up to this seasonal halfway point, because it definitely did not feel like a finale. This episode 12 did not feel like it was closing and they were so starting a new one. This show is not slowing down whatsoever. While well, they got to keep the club room and stay in a cosplay group at the school, once again, those implications came to mind because Okamura is 17, not 18. All the already material that was in the room had to be thrown out, which I thought was dumb as hell because he could just took it home. But he wanted to stay true to the group. On a side note, apparently the student council president that is walking them through this whole ordeal is now interested in cosplay. Well, even hold you, kind of got me hyped to see where that goes. No spoilers though. No goddamn way they're gonna strip her before this is over. Outside of cosplay, Tashibana typically wears purple. Mirasa typically sells white. To the council president, what you got? Not to mention, a favorite character in the show wears black. Yes, ladies and gentlemen, I'm talking about our teacher, Mayuri. Milky titties. Milky sucking bus. With the milky bits. Who's also 22. Learned that this episode. Which brings me into another discussion. And no, this isn't an excuse or a silver lining for anybody who was turned off by the fact of me mentioning the ages of our main characters. However, the supporting cast of this show, somebody has to be that guiding light and that leading light. With that being said, it's occupied by the adults. The likes of Tisha Mayuri. The type likes of Majino, the other big cosplayer. Uh, there's another cosplayer, I forgot her name, but used to cosplay with my Yuri that hangs her head around that helps me be sun out. And of course, there's 753. 753 being Nagami, aka the first person in the show that honestly felt like a legitimate threat. And one of the four heavenly kings, not kings, four heavenly queens. The reason I said kings is because I fucked it up, because every time when I heard that, I just immediately went back to kill or kill. Now I'm talking about the, just say Elite Four. Make the, go ahead and make that Pokemon reference. One of the four heavenly queens was also my Yuri herself. Milky sucking bus. And I'm not trying to downplay the miners, but when it came to when it comes to the subject of cosplaying itself in the show, it kinda only goes far so far with them. 
Because yeah, the guy jump up the hurdles. They both love SG type fan service type medium, especially Lily L. But they can only do so much of that because of their age. And not to give go off the critique that was given to her in the 12th episode, that's pretty much the only cosplay that Ruby Sun is currently doing. Even when Tasha Bond gets to the cosplay with Ruby Sun, they cosplay the same show. But here comes the adult cast with all these other tidbits and all these other stuff going on with cosplay that relates so much to IRL cosplayers. As I briefly mentioned in my previous video, Mayuri's whole struggle with cosplay was so real. The fact that she got an older, the fact that she, even at the age of 22, tender age in my opinion, she zoomed through college, beast mode through it, so she could become a teacher. And because she's a teacher, she can't be out here portraying her body in such a sexual way, at least not publicly. Even when it came to the cosplay group staying at the school, the teacher, the principal itself, as vague as he was with it, with it decided that it needed to be kept under wraps and not be made public to the rest of the school, which is obviously going to blow up in his face, but right now that's how it is. Even as for standing as a teacher, if, if, if a word gets out, like when the moment came where Okamura figured out that Mayuri was the milky succubus, she held that knife to his head. She was about to kill this nigga if he said anything. And imagine if that made public, went throughout the school and blah blah blah. Yeah. She would probably get fired on the spot. But then it was the thing with like Majino, like she and her her manager, her manager that got a close relationship with Okamura about help guiding him through this thing as a manager and a cameraman. And they just have so many tips, so many IRL type shit going on with these conventions, these shoots, these photos, and it just was just enlightened me at some point. And then of course there's not gonna be being a professional cosplayer per se on the online strip of things where she got a bunch of followers, blah blah blah. And she was speaking on, you know, the hate that she gets as a cosplayer, how the isolation that she got for being a cosplayer, for being professional, and she ended up seeing most more negative than positive. So while she still loved cosplaying, she had to reignite that what made her love of cosplay in the first place through Lily L, which I get is cliche as hell. But again, in a medium like this, you don't necessarily see that in these because cosplay shows are rarity and again these adult characters i know i keep throwing that out there but god damn it the finest hell first and foremost you think the 22 year old isn't as bad as it's like more fine than the 16 year old you can take your freaky ass straight to jail and also again Reva signs her most cos her most fan serious moments that's by her initiative is when she has no qualms immediately getting naked when it comes to dressing up to these cosplays everything else is kind of out of by accident or done just for the straight action moment with, to get okimura involved so when you have that cliche medium of fan service show, then look at these other characters, these adult characters that's pretty much just able to strut their stuff however they want to without any ramifications doing so for the love of it or for the sake of competition. Bitch, it hits different. And we're going to need to see more of the Heavenly Queens get more involved into this cosplay community. You can imagine that same medium around these adult cosplayers, the enlightenment on the cosplay, the sexiness involved in all of this, and they're pushing through the front what makes cosplay great in the first place. It's not going to slow down whatsoever, especially with the introduction of Nona, one of the new, the new five that this, this new cameraman, Mr. Camera, trying to enforce. I ain't going to hold you. Kind of got me hyped for part, part two. But this video is getting long, so let me end this. This is go over general things. All the characters in this show are pretty much goofballs. Why well, does typical traits to all these char characters because they're all also at the same time which be real huge otakus, especially calling themselves huge otakus, even though the biggest one will be Okamura, crying blood out of his eyes when he had to throw away his porn. I do like the connection he's making with the student council president, though. He ain't seen Mayuri as being serious about her character again, the character she likes to play in that fighting game, <laughs> whooping Okamura's ass with a 10-hit combo while not looking at the screen. And despite everybody else's reasons into it, Rivi san obviously cares more about cosplay in the show than anybody, so that love for cosplay itself is going to keep it not in a flame in this show that's going to be very much prevalent. I want to see what the other two queens are, I want to see what this top five thing goes, I want to see what, how Mr. Camera interacts with Okamura when that eventually happens, I want to see what happens with the student body as his more and more gets out. This show gave me a lot to think about. And it's crazy how I say that because when it comes to really the only other two shows I'm watching this season that does have a second core, one being my favorite show of the year so far, Delicious and Dungeon, another being one of my favorite shows watching right now, The Fables, if this show has done anything right, it has made the hype for the second half of the season very much real, like Delicious and Dungeon, and like The Fable has done, and all three of these shows was able to do so in its own way. And at that point, you're just no less than appreciative. But again, I've made my point. If I can make one last comparison, I will compare this show to, to my dear friend, Nokotan. Because it's a show on first impressions of what I immediately saw when I first looked at the list that I easily dumped on right in the beginning to think it would become one of my favorite shows of the year. Ladies and gentlemen, here we are. 
If you watch this video, leave me a comment. Let me know what you think. Like this video for me. And I'll see y'all. Peace out. Subscribe to the spin move. Mm -hmm.